So basically, having played all day and taking a look at taking a look at New World, this is basically on uh, on max settings. Not for those of you who are ESO players. Graphics slightly less than ESO, although in terms of PvP, um, in terms of PvP, there are some glitches. Like I said, for those of you who have played PvP in, in ESO Cyrodiil, you know, sometimes where the floor graphics will kind of disappear, that does happen uh, in, New, in New World. On occasion, I've seen it quite a few times, having streamed it for the past eight hours. I've been playing for about, I don't know, probably the past 12 and a half hours or so. And I would say from a PvP perspective, my biggest issue with New World is the stagger mechanic if you played um any other pve role-playing game that has uh, a stagger mechanic where when you swipe at that when you swipe at your enemy it kind of causes the characters to kind of stagger back again for those of you who played eso think old school jabs right old school jabs when you hit them with the last jab it would cause your character to stutter right the new mechanic, of course, gives you a slope, but way back, for those who remember, the old jabs used to cause your character to stagger back, and you could basically be chain CC'd without actually having be without actually having been crowd controlled. My other issue is with if you're playing, for example, like a melee character, and there are occasions where you can literally be right on top of an opponent whether it's a mob or like another person and for example like with sword and shield sword and shield has um it has basically like a, a shield bash similar to eso where it does a stun right think of like reverberating bash they have the exact same ability um in this game too and looking at the sword and shield line it's called where are we it's called Shield Bash, right? So you've got two different crowd control abilities. One of them is Shield Rush. The other one, of course, is Shield Bash. I've had quite a few PvP experiences where you basically flag for PvP. I will say PvP is pretty few and far between. At the very least, at my current level, I'm currently level 18. On occasion, you might come across someone who is, fla who is flagged. They might fight you, or they might not fight you. They might just run away. What I have noticed, um, getting back to Bash, getting back to Bash, one of the problems with melee combat is you literally have to be right on top of your opponent for that ability to land. Sometimes, even when you are literally right on top of them, it will still miss. Forget about a target that's actually turning and running. It will just automatically miss. It's not like an ESO where, you know, you can hit someone from eight meters away where if you're literally in the middle of the animation and that person starts to run away or, you know, it will still hit them. In, in New World, that is definitely not the case. You literally have to be right on top of your opponent for that ability to land. And even sometimes when you are, it just doesn't land. Very similar also with Shield Rush. Shield Rush also at times has the same problem because sometimes it's really difficult to to make out the, the distance between you and an opponent. Typically, again, another ability that has a little bit of that has a little bit of sort of a gap closer to it, but it's so small that a lot of times you can you can misjudge it, and so what happens is you typically end up using it literally when you're right on top of your opponent. The other thing is that in New World, there is no uh, CC immunity in the game. So basically, you can crowd control an opponent where you can basically hit him with a light attack, stun him with your bash, continue to hit him while he is basically stunned, and then as he's doing the get up animation, basically just shield charge him all over again, and then repeatedly hit the individual all, all over again before that person even has the opportunity to react. Now, in 1v1s, it sometimes is not that bad. But if you're fighting in a 1vx scenario or even, even something like a 1v2, like I said before, the stagger mechanic 
is is terrible for PvP, especially because unlike ESO, where for example, when you're holding block, you're still blocking even if someone is standing behind you, which is is more realistic. But the problem is with a stagger mechanic is that you can literally be hit from anything that's roughly about I'd say anything that's like 45 degrees in front of you. So just about. 45 degrees in front of your character anything that's outside of that 45 degrees will typically cause you to stagger it happens with mobs mobs will like lunge forward but then kind of curve around you certain mobs will do that certain level 15 mobs that will do that where they'll kind of dash forward and then curve around you and it causes you to stagger and then the, their next auto attack causes you to stagger again which forces you then to have to move back in PvP, where you're fighting multiple opponents, all it takes is one person basically to move around you and then just keep on auto-attacking you over and over and over again, and you, your character, you just basically lose control of your character for the most part. It's very difficult to have 1v2s, particularly because of that. And so, the other issue is that because of the stagger mechanic, right, the, stag the, the light attack sometimes is faster than certain abilities. Oh, I see that's what I'm talking about, the interrupts. Abilities, for example, um, if you're using, like, for example, let's say you're using a two-hand weapon. Oh, it looks like my two-handed weapon is broken. So, for example, if you're using uh, a two-handed weapon, I don't know if I can repair it. Do I have enough? I don't. So, the, the animations, kind of like Wrecking Blow, Wrecking Blow is a very slow animation. For that reason, previously in the past, Wrecking Blow, you could just literally bash someone in the middle of performing a Wrecking Blow and it would just uh, stop the animation altogether, which means you had to time your ability. It's very similar in this game, where if you're in the middle of, for example, doing an, a heavy attack or if you're doing an ability, oh my god, that is loud. If you're doing an ability that um, causes, that has a little bit more of a delay, what you'll notice is that the stagger will go off before your ability goes off and then it eats the cooldown because the, the, this, this entire game is based off of cooldowns and some of the cooldowns, as you can see, are quite long. So you've got some cooldowns that are 15 seconds, some of them that are 30 seconds, some of them that are 20 seconds. And so, and so for most of these abilities, even if you're literally in the middle of a shield charge and someone hits you with a light attack, you you nothing will happen your character will stagger back in the middle of doing the shield charge animation and you'll li literally do nothing you won't deal damage and you won't of course cc the, your opponent but you will be cc'd without them having to utilize an actual cc in the game it's something i think they should literally remove from this game it's, it's a terrible design and it's typically what i don't like to see even in solo rpgs because then the combat becomes super dumbed down because you can just literally sit there and, and just literally click left mouse button over and over again. And I'll show you an example of that where I got into a 1v2 and I've got and I got into like I got ganked in like a 1v4, 1v5, and I completely lost control of my character because of the stagger mechanic. I think they should rethink a lot of the which is one of the reasons why people maybe complain about the fact that, for example, if you're you have shared cooldowns not based off of your ability but based off of where that ability is so you've got three different abilities wherever you bind those abilities let's just say for example you bind this to one two and three so if you use your one ability on your sword and shield and then swap over to your let's say for example your two-handed weapon your one ability on your two-handed weapon also goes on cooldown so then people people say well you use one as your main your main um your main ability your main weapon for like spamming abilities and then you might switch over for example to your sword and shield and just utilize passives uh for like either light attack damage damage reduction on sword and shield um, for both range and melee attacks etc uh, the problem is is that of course it makes the combat very hack and slash and not necessarily very skill based because of the stagger mechanic because you can literally stagger someone cc them auto attack them and then as their opponent is getting up they're literally getting staggered back and then re-cc them now of course 
since that is the case, that's probably why you can't use abilities on your other bar because your other bar can also have CCs. You can have uh, a CC. You could have this is this is a CC. This is a CC. This is a CC. This is kind of like a semi soft CC. And then you have uh, just a straight up damage ability here. So you could literally in a 1v1 just chain CC the person. You can just literally shield bash them, light attack, light attack, light attack, and then hit them with a shield charge, light attack, light attack, light attack, and then rotate to your other ability and then you know basically hit them with the two-hand knockback and you literally get crowd controlled for the entire fight, which is probably why they did that which is why it should be removed to add for more fluidity of combat so that you actually are utilizing skills more often and not just literally spamming your left click. That's my pet peeve with um, PvP. The other thing that I wanted to talk about is if you're, let's say, you're, for example, you're playing a sorted shield and a two-handed hammer build and your opponent is, for example, range, both on... Uh, both on like the resto staff, the restoration, the healing staff, and then basically your mage staff. Both the both of them have access to a very long gap closer, right? For those of you who play ESO, think of streak, but like old school streak that was literally twice as far uh, when the game first started. That's basically what you have in this game. You have sort of the equivalent of a streak that was streak forward that you can use offensively. You can use it defensively. One of the issues that I've had is that when you're fighting someone who is utilizing, for example, like a sword and shield and either a, re uh, a, rest a healing staff or a fire staff, is that many people, when they're losing, just literally use this ability and you cannot catch them. They, they move way too quickly uh, because the gap that it creates is so wide and melee runs really, really slow, as you can see. Like, this is literally me sprinting but if you have your weapon out and you're in the middle of combat this is basically how far you move so the streak will take you let's say like from this tree somewhere to like here like almost to the end almost to the end of the fence and of course it has a passive where you can basically uh, take a cooldown for the ability right so there's also a passive that reduces um, somewhere around here by 10%. Well, it's one of these passives where it reduces your basically your cooldowns by 10%. So it turns it around to about an 18 second. So you can deal a little bit of damage. Basically, gap close. There's also slows that are literally tied to the fire staff. And of course, your character ends up moving like this. And you're just basically just tanking damage to the face. Um, on, on a sword and shield build or on a two-handed build and then by the time you actually get to your opponent to deal so much damage and then you try to CC them it's really easy for your opponent to move out of the way same thing for example with the shield that's literally how far it moves you literally it's like nothing it literally moved me from here to here uh, it's not really that great of a gap closer the other thing in this game is that there's no tab target. It's not like ESO where your abilities kind of lock on to your opponent or where you can use where you're kind of like in mass PvP where you can lock on to your target and basically just uh, target that opponent even when you're in the midst of a crowd. Most of your abilities hit everybody. For example, like um, Shield Charge will literally hit everybody that's in your way. Same thing um, with Shield Bash. Shield Bash will hit everybody that's literally right in front of you. It'll CC everybody. Same thing with the two-handed, um, the two-handed not, the two-handed not knockback. So it makes it a little bit more difficult when you're fighting against uh, anybody who has any kind of range and mobility. Probably gets a little bit easier when you go a little bit deeper into the tree and you have access maybe to slows. But the problem is, is that the gap close on and there's a gap close both on. Where are we? There's a gap close both on the fire staff here with burnout as well as on the healing staff here. So it makes it really easy for people to basically, you know, speed away. From you just think of old school streak where you know the the the, the magic of sort just disappears you know into the distance the moment they start to lose the fight and the cooldowns are relatively short comparison to 
for example, my gap closer, right? If you look at um, the, it's 30 seconds for the shield bash and 20, you know, 25 seconds. So there's more mobility than there is the ability to keep your, to keep melee within basically uh, melee distance, especially because you literally have to be right on top of your opponent for your abilities to go off. Your abilities like, um, basically shield bash and then shield charge. You literally have to sit kind of right on top of your opponent. And of course, if the person streaks away from you, you, you just don't have a way to catch them. There's no pull mechanic in the game. The only ability that I know so far that does have a slow is tied to um, Path of Destiny, which is basically you jump in the air, you slam your hammer down, and it deals like this uh, earthquake sort of, you know, line and then if you go deep enough into the tree you'll have access to uh, a bit of a slow and i think there's another one no there's another one that's tied i believe it's tied to the shield here actually yeah right here yeah so you have another one here but again um, you literally have to be right on top of your opponent to to get this off and that individual can still streak away it doesn't stop them from streaking away it just stops them from being able to move and basically run away from you i would say those are kind of my my one, some of my my biggest pet peeves um in terms of the pvp what i would say in terms of the, the game overall i would say for for people who are looking at it for PvE long term, like long term PvE, there isn't exactly a lot of content, right? So you have like the ability to heal, the semi ability to tank on sword and shield, but there isn't like a taunt mechanic, right? There's there aren't dungeons in the game, there aren't raids currently. Um, before, of course, they would do that, they would have to introduce those abilities. They would have to be like some sort of a, a threat mechanic and something to taunt mobs. Uh, because currently, that doesn't exist in the game. Because Again, this game was originally designed solely as a PvP, you know, sand, sort of sandbox MMO, survival-based MMO. And so they've stripped a lot of those mechanics, for example, like the justice system, the... Uh, you know, the chance of when you die, you basically can drop your loot. That doesn't exist anymore in the game. Instead, when you die, just like in ESO, there's just like a, a degradation. There's a durability to your items. Instead of you dropping your items, you just basically lose durability and you have to replace them. The only way that you can, you can't buy it, you can't craft it. The only way that you can actually get um, these repair sort of items is by breaking down other items. So this also kind of hinders PvP because well at least in terms of repairing like these items you can go through them very quickly especially if you're pvping and doing pve and you and you're dying uh because you can get zerged you can get zerged down very easily in this game because not everybody on your faction for example pvps they may be certain individuals like when i was running around I, I think I, I kept getting involved in like 1v2s and the 1v1s that I did get involved in, either the person uh, ran away and I couldn't catch them or it was like 1v2s that turned into 1v5s and I would end up you know, getting killed and I would literally be maybe the only person who was actually you know flagging for PvP because you have to flag just like in Retail WoW. You have to flag to experience open world PvP and not a lot of people... In essence really do it some do but the pvp is few and far between which leads to another problem that there's no instance pvp like for example like in eso you've got battlegrounds yes you may wait you know 10 you know 5 10 minutes for a bg but at least you know that that system exists within the game that system does not exist within this game currently because their sort of instance pvp revolves more around a 50 v 50 um, that is exclusive to uh, guilds or companies that which is what they're called and so if you're not in a guild then you basically don't have access to that pvp if you're a solo pvp or if you play the game solo maybe you're a solo streamer you don't have access to that form of pvp because it's only exclusive to gvg and of course, it's 50 v 50. It's Zerg PvP. Just think about having a small keep um, 
and the keeps are not even as big as the ones in ESO. The keeps are fairly small. I say maybe two times the size of like the camps, the camps that are surround the ESO keeps. The castles that, that you're fighting for are, I would say, a little bit like twice the size of the little small keeps that are on the outskirts of you know the big keeps in ESO. They're not really that big. Think of like the small outposts, right? So like Sejanus, like a small outpost like like Bleakers. I would say it's about that size, and the, and that and that only happens at specific times. And of course, it's basically Zerg PvP. It's 50 v 50, so it's not exactly competitive, so to speak. For those who are like looking for like that small scale, you know, maybe the best of the best in 1v1s or who are doing like, you know, 2v2s or 3v3s where kind of build and composition kind of matters. And most of the in in this instance, you would mostly see Zerg PvP. Um, basically, what we have in ESO is basically what exists in this game. Which leads to another problem, like I said before, that there isn't necessarily a lot of... Like I said, there's not a lot of PvE at currently to do. It's very repetitive. You're repetitively doing the same sort of fetch quests and kill quests. There's no storyline in this game. There's not a um, there's not a, a plot that you're going through. You're just literally going to like a message board, picking up quests, or talking to an NPC, and, and there's like a little bit of a blurb. You don't even read it. You just click next. You just click accept quest and you move on. It's not like in ESO where there's you know, a storyline, there's, you know, NPC characters that are voiceovers. That doesn't exist in this game. For the reason being is because the the spine of the game is revolving around that sort of sandbox um, survival type of MMO. So the few months that they've had to sort of add PvE to the game is just not enough to hold like it's not enough to pull people away for example from eso if you enjoy you know you know you know 12 man raids and the 4v you know doing dungeons and kind of getting immersed in the quest that doesn't exist in this game if you're looking for you know solid pvp where you're getting involved in like small scale and you're fighting off large scales that's few and far between at least from what I've seen so far. Um, like I said, most of the time that I've gotten involved in PvP, I think I've had really small scale, really, I'm a solo player. So most of the PvP that I had is I'll see an opponent who's flagged for PvP, but I can't catch them because I guess currently I don't have access to um, the slow that the slow on uh, define conqueror maybe it would be a little bit easier if if that if i did have that passive so i can catch up to people because sometimes people just run and they don't stop they just keep on running and if you're in the middle of doing an animation for example you're using you're utilizing the animation um for path of destiny which kind of leap, leaps you into the air and slams it on the ground your opponent is still running forward and there's no um uh, stamina doesn't drain when your character is just basically perpetually running like when you're just sitting here running you can run to your heart's content there's no stamina drain so the only drain is of course when you're blocking and then of course when you're basically roll dodging or when you're utilizing like heavy armor you just kind of do like this little duck animation to avoid to basically sidestep and avoid attacks that's the real only drain um, of stamina or dodge rolling in the beginning of the game your character um, will do will do some dodge rolls um, if you're utilizing like a Anything, any sort of heavy armor from from what I understand is that you'll just basically do that animation. So it makes it difficult to actually catch people because they just perpetually run. They just perpetually run. If that person has blink, you will never catch that individual. Even if you even uh, if you had a even if you had a blink, um, it's, it's it's just not. You know that enjoyable gameplay. People are just like afraid to die for whatever reason. The other thing um, that I did want to talk about is again because of because of the removal of the justice system, and instead of like focusing on like always crafting new gear, um, you you have basically have to stop PvPing and go out 
and do PVE because you need to have access to repair parts. And the only way that you can get repair parts, as far as I know, is literally by breaking down items because when you as you're fighting you take damage as you take damage your durability goes down when you die which you you do die in pvp because a lot of times you'll just get zerg down that's happened to me multiple times where like i'm fighting a 1v1 or 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 1v2 and you just you just end up basically you just end up basically getting zerg down you get overwhelmed and then you just die and you just take the durability lost one thing that I do like is that um, there is a little bit of animation canceling. You really can't animation cancel, for example, um, the heavy attack. That is the heavy attack. You, unless you utilize a, a skill, you can't, for example, do a heavy attack into a shield bash. So there's like a sort of a little bit of a semi animation cancel. And of course, if you're in the middle of light of, of doing a light attack, you can um, you can interrupt it with a bash right and well i should say with your right click you hold right click to to basically bring your shield up and so you can kind of faint you can kind of faint with uh your left click into a block same thing with like an ability you can basically like faint into an, an ability and then uh, faint into an attack a light attack and then use an ability or for example you can like faint into a light attack and then dodge so there's like a little bit of animation canceling within the game and I guess that's good, but I would say that they really should have focused on just the PvP aspect or just making the game just a PvP game um, because it's too mediocre. The graphics are okay. The combat is, o is okay. Um, there's no storyline, so it's kind of like there isn't anything that it does exceptionally well. That's the problem. It's 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 like very mediocre. Had the combat and the PvP experience been really good, then like the graphics and the fact that there's no storyline or any or there's like no storyline, no dungeons, like a lot of that stuff you can kind of overlook because the PvP content kind of makes itself. That's the difference. Like once you kind of do a lot of PvE, the PvE just becomes repetitive, just like in Elder Scrolls Online. Once you understand the mechanics. There's basically um, the difficulty goes down, but the difference is is that PvP kind of creates its own content. It's, it's very dynamic. It's stuff that as a developer you cannot. Uh, it's stuff that as a developer you you just can't imitate. It's very hard to imitate because it's so dynamic. You know, you could be in the middle of leveling and all of a sudden a player comes and starts attacking you. And of course, unlike an NPC that just basically follows an AI script, you're literally fighting against a player. You're fighting against that player and that player's experience. And that, of course, that player's brain and, of course, skill, which makes for uh, a lot of dynamic gameplay. And, of course, as to um, the content that, ne that doesn't necessarily have to be created by a developer. These are just some of the things that I kind of wanted to touch on. Of course, I'm still going to be playing it for the for the for the 10 days, of course, that it's out. So I'll be I'll be picking it up again tomorrow morning. I'm it's basically 12. I've been playing it for like like past almost 13 hours and I just wanted to kind of show a little bit um, of my opinion about the combat so far and of course um, if you have any questions feel free to leave it in the comment section and of course you know if, if you if you like the content be sure to subscribe so that you don't miss out on future content thanks for watching take care and I'll see you next time